let's start about some art and architecture. Within Islam, which does not allow uh, the pictures of Muhammad, you're not going to see that inside of a mosque. So there are some ways to get around it, and they develop a very, very unique style of art and architecture. And you should, by the end of this, be able to identify some of the unique characteristics and some of the main buildings that are associated in Islam. The concept of a graven image is Muhammad was very, very against idols because if you think about it within the context of what society is working uh, in, this was a polytheistic society before him. And he was very, very scared, essentially, that they were going to go back to that style of worship. So it's very, a very, very anti-idol type worship. You're not going to see a picture of Muhammad. You're not going to see statues of Moses or Jesus. That's just not part of the religion. With that said, they're going to develop a style of artwork that is very, very unique, that has kind of three different characteristics, which I'll uh, be showing you some pictures of. Geometric patterns, arabesqueness, and calligraphy, which is a form of writing. So if you're a visual learner, uh, today's lesson will be right up your alley. With these geometric patterns, you'll see a lot of symmetry. Uh, so you'll see symmetry, you'll see a lot of repetition, and just the idea of having these geometric interlocking patterns, you'll see a lot within the Islamic art and architecture. So these next, ah, excuse me, the next few slides will uh, talk about uh, this and give you some examples so uh, you can understand it a bit better. Some more stuff to take a look at. Here's a floor inside of a mosque. Ooh, ah, so pretty. Calligraphy. Calligraphy is fancy writing. Well, obviously the language is going to be Arabic, which is the language of the Quran. So you have to at least identify Arabic. You don't have to read Arabic for this course, thank God. But you do have to identify Arabic and identify calligraphy, which is fancy writing. You can have this in any language. People do this in English, too. But you have to be able to identify this. They make the art, the, the writing, a work of art in and of itself, which uh, also happens in the Middle Ages with the uh, illuminated manuscripts. There's a plate with uh, Arabic there on the outside. Some more Arabic. Now, arabesque is this sense of curvature that you can see. And with arabesque, it's not exactly writing, per se. It could be just kind of a sense of curviness rather than straight lines. This is the type of uh, thing you wouldn't see in a mosque because it has pictures of people, but it's still associated with the region, uh, you know, Muslims making this, that region of the world, Middle Eastern art. You can see kind of the floral type stuff up there. In this carpet that you, that, you know, carpets are associated with the, this area of the world. Sense of, of, of curvature in this, uh, I don't even know what that is, a weird creature. Some more examples. Now, moving on to the architecture. Barring from the Romans, we do see a lot of uh, columns. We also see some arches, and then we also see some domes as well. In the uh, mosque, you tend to have an atrium in the middle, which is an open courtyard, which often features uh, a fountain of a sort, which may be used for uh, ritual washing. Right here is a fountain, and the guy's going and washing his feet prior to prayer. Now I got a bunch of M words, so you got to get used to them. I did not make these words up. I apologize because they all start with M, but it makes it a little bit hard to uh, learn them. But a little practice, and you'll get it down. And these towers are called minarets. And the dude that goes to the top to make the call to prayer is called the muezzin. In the, uh, excuse me, in the mosque, there is always a niche in the wall which shows which way Mecca is. And this is called the mirab. They don't really have traditional um, pulpits, like kind of uh, sermons. But the idea on the Holy Day of Friday, when you go up to the top of the minbar, that's where the uh, sermon is going to be delivered, or the equivalent of that. A form of school is called a madrasa. Now, some famous buildings you got to know. You got to know the the city, the country, and uh, the name of the building. This is the Blue Mosque, which is in Istanbul, Turkey. Another shot of the Blue Mosque. You can see the Blue Mosque here and the Hagia Sophia over here, and then this is where the Hippodrome used to be. Inside, it's called the Blue Mosque because of this blue tile. Hopefully you can see the Arabic right here. You can start getting your eyes trained for that. Other shots. 
Now you know why it's blue, the blue tie on the inside. And you can count it. One, two, three, four, five, uh, six minarets. You can see the hippodrome down here where that used to be. More purdy purdy shots. And some more. I got tons of photos today. This one's awesome. The Great Mosque at Samara, which is inside of a ziggurat. Think about that. That's Mesopotamian. That's going back to uh, when you were just a young freshman and all this stuff was new. This is Saudi Arabia. Sorry, that's cut off. And I'm trying to write with my right finger, and that's just not working because I'm left-handed. But that's how Saudi Arabia. This is the one with the Kaaba in it. You've known it, but you haven't known it. It's in Mecca in Saudi Arabia. Now, we'll be talking about two places in, in Israel. One of them is actually not related to Islam directly, and one's related basically to Islam, but also th all three religions, and that's the Dome of the Rock. It's called the Dome of the Rock because there's a dome and there's a rock inside. Really original, I know. And then we'll be talking about this, the Wailing Wall, the Western Wall, which is actually holy to Jews, but we haven't talked about it yet, so why don't we just throw it in uh, to today. Now, the Dome of the Rock, this rock is important to all three religions because supposedly this is the rock where Abraham was going to sacrifice uh, Isaac. Also, at the same time, in Islam, this is where uh, the rock where Muhammad ascended into heaven. It's called the foundation stone because it's kind of the foundation of the faith. And supposedly underneath the rock um, is a hole that's called the well of souls. I'll show you it. Also, too, this is supposedly the spot where the tabernacle was of the first temple. And when the, the first temple was destroyed by, by Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonians, the Ten Commandments disappeared. So the rumors, you know, the, the Ten Commandments are buried somewhere underneath. Other shot as well. Other shot of the Dome of the Rock. And some people that are just so excited to be in the Well of Souls. They're so excited. They can't contain it. This supposedly is at the end of time. Um, you can, this is a Muslim belief that you could hear the voices of the dead down there. And at the end of time, the Kaaba is going to come and be put back on top of the, the, uh, the rock. The second temple, remember, had been destroyed by the Babylonians. And then it gets destroyed in 70 A.D. by the Romans. That says Romans. Uh, Herod's, what's known as Herod's Temple, and that gets destroyed, but there's only one part remains, which is going to be the Wailing or the Western Wall. Here's uh, Jews uh, going and praying at the Western Wall, which is the remains of the temple, as I said. Some more women, you should be able to identify that as Hebrew. When you go to the wall, it's traditional to put uh, a prayer note inside of the wall. Another shot of relation to the Dome of the Rock, to the Western Wall, or the Wailing Wall, right next to each other. Jerusalem split city, right? With uh, both Islam and and Judaism being important uh, religions there today. A Hasidic Jew going and uh, praying at the, at the wall. And another shot. And last but not least, the Temple Mount. Very important to all three religions. So, there you go. Islamic art and architecture.